the main goal that I said to skip that I wanted to do here today and he's good at identifying the species to cut out is is allowing those species to to regenerate new growth the, the new woodsy browse those deer have to have it in part of their diet you know coming from Michigan um, you have a browse line it's a very significant thing in, in a lot of states uh, in Iowa you don't see a browse line as much because of the different varieties of food but it's an important part of their diet to get some of these different woodsy brows uh, available to them. The biggest thing that I notice is that with anything, you get a tree, your old growth is gonna be down low and your new growth is gonna be up high. That's your freshest growth, that's what's growing uh, the most recently. So we wanna get some of those you know, more invasive trees, uh, some trees that are also gonna open up uh, you know, better crop trees, we wanna get those cut down allow those to regenerate through woodsy brows um, instead of totally killing them off with a you know a, a herbicide so it skips really good at identifying what trees to cut and i'm really good at cutting them so that's what we're going to continue to do work our way south and i'll just kind of follow his lead here today and we're not going to get a ton done you know but we're going to at least get some pockets done so So I've been cutting trees probably 20 years and I told several of my friends this year, I said this last year I'm, I'm cutting trees, I'm retiring. So I'll do it a little bit, like helping my brother out with this farm, a couple of my buddies I'll help out. Um, but I'm to the point where I'm getting a little too old to be doing this stuff. I've done it for 20 years. A few times if I didn't have my helmet on, it would have been bad. So you definitely want to look up before you cut. But again, you start doing this so many times and you just forget once and a limb might come down. So stuff like that is pretty spooky. And I've heard of a lot worse and thank goodness uh, nothing like that's happened. But since I'm quitting cutting, it won't be an issue. I'm done. Finished. I don't believe that. <laughs> that's what everybody says. This is an oak and this is getting really into the nitty gritty but we can actually prune this uh, that's going to be able to have a lot of sunlight and grow a lot more rapidly and spit out a lot more acorn production that's a nice walnut that's a walnut. let those sprout up let the deer eat the sprout and keep opening up the canopy and that's where hinge cutting kind of goes wrong where people get too out of control with the hinge cutting and the deer can't get through it. If you don't have them, you should plant them. Dwarf chinkapin or chinkapin, they're two different subspecies. And if you want to divert the deer in certain areas, hey, I want to push them closer to my stand and then cut big trails so it forces them by your stand on the upwind side of them. Find beds against those treetops. Thermal cover is huge, um, but this is another way that we provide thermal cover. A lot of things uh, that you can do with all this cover on the ground and manipulate it later. Um, but it's all going to be to your benefit and to the deer's benefit. There's, you know, four or five points that Skip touched on earlier. But one of the biggest points for me is opening up their diet this time of year. I mean, they just got through the rut of rough winter. You're going to have nursing uh, mothers with fawns coming up soon here. And I was just pointing out that we're trying to get some different variety in their diet. Uh, food on the ground, easily accessible food. This is going to be the gift that keeps giving because they're going to eat the, brow the, the the new growth at the top here, all these buds, and then at the trunk of the trees, you're going to get all those new trees, the, the suckers, and you're not going to have this whole tree that's taking all the nutrients out of that trunk anymore. You're going to have fresh growth, and that's going to continue to happen in the years to come, the next 10, 15, 20 years until this tree gets to be more of a bush. It's gonna create a lot of uh, a lot of different food that's not currently in their diet. Uh, this particular farm's a new farm of mine, so it hasn't had any timber work whatsoever done to it. So again, we're opening up a different kind of food source for them. And I think it's a food source that a lot of people, uh, frankly, I think they overlook it. So we're gonna continue to do some of these different pockets today and 
create different foods and different uh, or different food options at a few different spots at the farm.